Lift your right hand and say, I choose God's report. Verse number one, Deuteronomy 8, every commandment which I command you today, you must be what? Careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Let's see that again. Every commandment which I command you today, must be, you must be careful to observe. He says, when is he commanding you? Today. So this is not then. This is speaking to you when. When is it speaking to you? Talk like a believer. When is it speaking to you? So the Lord says today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and do what? Put your hand on yourself. I say, I will live and multiply. Come on, lay your hand on yourself and say, I will live and multiply. Declare it again. Say it again. So, he orders you to live. But apostle, I feel like giving up. No, the word says live. And the Bible says they just shall live by what? They just shall live by what? They just shall live by what? You see, I was telling myself and reminding myself that faith the life of faith is not a life of comfort. It is a life of a challenge. If you fear to be challenged and you fear obstacles, then you're not living a life of faith. Because a life of faith is a life of a challenge. It's a life that actually takes, away from, takes you away from complacence and comfort. So if you're living by faith, you are going to live in a life of trusting God at every level that God is with me to help me. Not to disappoint me. So the Bible says today, you shall live by this. And verse 2 says, you shall remember that your God led you all the way 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to know, that what, to know what was in your heart. Whether you do keep his commandment. So he humbled you and allowed you to gather to hunger and feed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not do it. Live by bread alone, but by man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So this is something you need to remember. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word spoken. In other words, if God says this is a month of multiplication, I want you to live by that. Not by food. I want you to live by what I say. I want to multiply you. Verse number four. Let's read together. All of us. Your garments did not do what? I don't hear you. Let's continue. How many years? 40 years, their garments and shoes did not do what? That's a miracle. That is a miracle. Listen to me. If you don't see the power of multiplication in this, how can a shoe, as the, as the feet of a little young man grew, even the shoe grew? The Bible doesn't say that God took them to butter. And bought them shoes. God did not take them to bat and say, you know, every single time like you take your kids and keep changing shoes because they outgrow them. These ones had one pair. But that one pair, the Lord revived it every single day. The Lord multiplied it. So I can imagine... Somebody says, hey guy, do you see, 20 years later, look, my shoe is growing. So it wasn't the foot growing, also the shoe was growing. If that's not the power of God, what is that? How do you put on one pair of clothes for 40 years? You are not stinking, and remember you are in the wilderness. 
you have shoes, but they are not wearing out. If we can go back and live by what God says, child of God, we are about to see these miracles happen. That in your life, you are going to see God turn what people thought cannot work. What people thought would never happen for you. God is going to make it grow in your eyes, just before your eyes. No wonder God says, I'll place a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In other words, you will be growing and multiplying and when your enemies are watching. Child of God, there is one thing that your enemy cannot do. Clap your hands if you're clapping them. There is one thing your enemy cannot do. He cannot stop your multiplication. He can interfere, but he cannot stop. I raise my hand. Whatever has been interfering with your life, I cancel it in Jesus' name. I release the power of multiplication in your life. May God give you what we call repeated addition. Increase. The Bible says that wherever they went, their shoes did not wear. Lift your right hand and say, every way and tear that the world wanted me to experience, I cancel it. Come on, lift your right hand and say, every way and tear that the world wanted me to have, I refuse it. You shall not wear. No wonder the Bible says, do not grow weary. Galatians 6 verse 9, in well-doing, we must be consistent in doing what God has called us to do. For in due season, somebody shout in due season, you will reap. There is a time that is coming when nothing can stop what God has intended for you. And when your time comes, you must shine. You didn't hear what I say. When your time comes, you must shine. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, arise and shine. That word arise is also related to timing. When your time comes, you must pick up yourself. You can't stay under. No more being in the dust. It's time to arise and shine and watch your light has come. That word also has come that the time for you to manifest is now. You must, ma you must manifest the glory. Lift your right hand and say, I will manifest the glory. Forty, 40 years. Oh my God. Verse 7, for the Lord your God. Is bringing you into a good land. <laughs> Are you seeing that? A land of brooks of water, fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig tree, pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you'll eat bread without scarcity. Oh my God. Every, without scarcity. If you are experiencing scarcity in your life, this is the time to remember that God wants to give you a flaw. A land, a bread without scarcity. You will lack nothing. Come on, see verse number, verse number nine. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. In which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given. You see, when you are full and God has blessed you, it is very, it becomes natural to bless the Lord. You don't struggle to bless the Lord. And the reason why you are struggling even to clap your hands right now, because there is something minus, is something you're lacking. But begin to clap your hands right now because you are breaking every lack in your life. Sit down. Your time has come. Sit down. Your time has come. Lift your right hand and say, my time has come. Oh, come on, I don't hear you. When your time comes, you enter into what is yours. And what the devil does is to blind you from seeing your time. Your moment and your season. 
But apostle, how do I see when things are so ugly around me? The reason you feel that they're ugly is because you failed to recognize the presence of God in your situation. But when you recognize the presence of God in your situation, you cannot fail to see good out of evil. Because even in your darkest moment, you will still see Jesus as the light of the world. Even when it is bad and worse, your confession is different. A land in which you lack nothing. This large place, I prophetically declared, is a land, is a place. It's an anointing that God is bringing you into. And God says that you lack nothing good. You will eat and be full and bless the name of the Lord. Be aware that you do not forget the Lord your God by keeping his commandments, his judgment, and his statutes which I command you today. Lest you when you have eaten and full and have built beautiful houses, I have no problem building a beautiful house because it is in the scripture. If the people have a problem with seeing you in a beautiful house, then that is their, that's their problem. But the Bible says when you have built beautiful houses, you see yourself in a beautiful house. Because it's in the scripture that when you build a beautiful house and houses, in fact, you're not supposed to have one. It says houses. When you've built them, and it says then, make sure you do not forget God. Because the problem we have today is that when people accumulate wealth, they forget God. Wealth and money is a hindrance and is an enemy to, if you're not careful, it's an enemy to your relationship with God. And the idea that God wants you to have a relationship that, with him, that is uninterrupted. Uninterrupted relationship. That's why... We don't preach religion. We preach a relationship with Jesus. Because a relationship with Jesus is, is continuity. It's is a fresh anointing. You don't settle for a certain idea and build everything on that. No. You settle for revelation. And revelation must be ongoing. It's not a one, a one thing. Revelation is continuous. And so God says there must be a flaw. Verse 13, when your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver and your gold. Watch this. God even says, I want to multiply your silver and gold. Now here you are talking about monetary money. Somebody say money. When your money has multiplied. Oh, may these Saturdays, may your money, may your seed, may everything that you sow, may God multiply. He says, when your silver and gold are multiplied. And all that you have is multiplied. Do you see what God has for you? All that you have has multiplied. In other words, this is my intention for you. That when these things happen, don't forget me. He doesn't say, now that I have seen that you may forget me, I will not make them happen. No, but I'm going to give them to you. But don't forget me. Don't distance yourself from what made you or what brought you to where you are. So everything must multiply. That's the reason in John 6, from verses number 1, the Bible says Jesus now has compassion on the multitude. The Bible says they've been following him for three consecutive days and they've not eaten anything. And he says to the disciples, he says to one of them, I want you to feed these people. And then Philip is saying, where are we going to get all this money? Where, even if we had the money, where are we going to buy all this bread that these may eat? Now, what is impossible before men is possible with God. Are you getting me, child of God? Because you and I are not far from Philip. We could say the same thing. Where am I going to get all this to fulfill my vision? 
But the Bible says Jesus said this because he himself knew what he would do. He would do. Don't think God is quote unaware that when you are into a challenge of your life, he's unaware or he doesn't have a route of escape for you or he doesn't have a way that is going to bless you even in the midst of your circumstance. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody here? So in the midst of anything that you face, God knows how to get you out. Now, you may not know how to get out, but God knows how to get You may not see how he's going to do it, but God has already provided a way of escape. He says in the word, he says that every temptation and trial that comes to you, God says it happens to all people across the world. But the beauty about it, that in every trial of your life, God has a, an exit. God has an exit. God has a way of rescuing you. God has a way of picking you right when you are surrounded. When you don't know what to do. Because Paul talks about when I've been attacked. When I was in the hands of the bandits. When I was faced with those that wanted to stone me. Those that didn't like me, like my teaching, like my preaching. Those who didn't like my success, they all wanted me dead. But there is a way God rescued me. So no matter where you are, no matter what is going on, I decree and declare, may God open your eyes to see that somehow you're going to get out. And you're going to get out better. Can I hear an amen? Lift your right hand and say, I'm going to get out and I'm going to get out better. Whatever it is, you are going to get out. Now, he said this because he himself knew. And that's the life of faith. Because when you have, have a relationship with God, I am not going to worry about anything because God knows how to get me out. God knows how to defend me. God knows how to fight my battles. God knows how to, for some reason, God knows how to make a way where there seems to be no way that I can push through the walls and get out because I am aware one of the secrets of your relationship with God is to being aware that no matter how ugly it looks outside, the presence of God is still with you and God is going to help you. God is going to take you out. God is going to rescue me. That's why you should always know that in your spirit. That regardless of where I am, God is going to multiply me. And the Bible says, they locate a boy. That's John chapter 6. I believe you'll be throwing those verses on the screen. You would, he locates a boy. They locate a boy, has some bread and has some fish. And they said, Jesus, here is what's available. It's too little, but what do we do with it? And this is something you need to recognize. That whatever is not enough, presented in the hands of God, it becomes a seed. And every time God's hand touches a seed, he gives it the power to multiply. So they bring it to Jesus, and Jesus said, make the people sit down. Make the people sit down. Look at this. You bring to him bread and fish. And it's just like a drop in the bucket. And the next instruction, make the people sit down. And make them sit in fifties. A miracle multiplication happens in an atmosphere of order. Every time God is going to multiply you, there must be order in you. Must order you must bring everything in order. You must restructure the way you are thinking. Restructure the way you see things. Because before he multiplies, he makes them exercise order. I cannot multiply where there is confusion. I cannot bless where there is disorder. That's what, no wonder every church which has order and structure is a blessed church. It's not a church where everybody just does what they want or they do what they want. There must be structure. The Bible says that let everything be done in order and in decency in the church. If you find some place where there is no order, there is no order in leadership. 
Everybody wants to say what they want to say. That means it's a lack of a blessing. Because first of all, you should understand when your life is blessed, it is also ordered. It is ordered. It's structured. So he makes them sit down. He says, make them sit down. But if we sit down, sit them down, what are we going to give them? Jesus knew what to do. You don't first wait for the multiplication. Then you have order or structure. You have to have order and structure in your life so that the multiplication can be effective. Are you getting me, child of God? S sit them down. So imagine they're sitting them in 50s and they're telling, this is over 5,000 people. Imagine how many groups of 50s if you can divide. And Jesus says, make them sit down. And Jesus has to wait until they are all sat down. And they are sat down in 50s. And then, when that is done, that is when he picks the bread and the two fish. And the Bible says, he lifted them up and thanked God. Everybody read that verse on the, on the screen right there, right there. Come on, let's go. And Jesus did what? He took the loaves. And when he had given what? He distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples to those who are sitting down. And likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. Watch this. Not everything requires prayer. Some things you just need to thank him. Jesus is not praying. The Bible says, and he, after he had given thanks. If it was you and me, the next thing we would quickly panic with, oh God, in the name of Jesus. If you can, I, I, I pray you can do this miracle. No. Jesus just thanked God. Every season and a moment of your life that you are in right now, some of those moments require you to lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. And there is a season for prayer. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says there is a season and a time for everything. You can't just think, because at this time, Jesus is thanking God for the bread. Something that is small. Remember, then he hands it over to the hands of the disciples. And he says, I want you to distribute. But watch this. The bread and the fish does not multiply in the hands of Jesus. It multiplies in the hands of the disciples. Because he does not need a miracle. It is the disciples and the people that need a miracle. So the bread has to leave his hands. The blessing of God has already left his word. He has already declared that I want you to multiply. So when it comes into your hand, it has to multiply. When you receive the word that God has declared over your life, you are receiving the power to multiply. Lift your right hand. Lift your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Louder, in the name of Jesus, whatever has left your mouth and your hand towards my life, you have given it the power to multiply. So when it, when it, it went in the hands of the disciples, they kept handing out and it wasn't finishing. This is a miracle God I saw. This is a God of miracle that I serve. You don't have to. The moment you know how to live by faith, you should never worry about what is going on because once God has declared the word, that word empowers your life to become, to multiply, has empowered your life to be better. That word empowers your life to be favored. That word empowers your life to succeed and go through places that others have failed Overcome in areas that others have given up. Build in a place that others said it was impossible. You can't have the word and have a life 
Ofelia. 